Jai Guru. Jai Guru, I offer my salutations to all the Gurus. Guru Kripahi Kevala. And I take this as a blessing that Parvatima has given me to share this interactive space. I am only meant to be an instrument and a medium in order to ask and channel all your aspirational questions towards her. And uh, I pray that Gurus bless me with the strength and humility to do that. Um, I was just before initiating the conversation, I was asking Parvatima that, you know, should we discuss right from how did you get into the bowel path and all of that. But then she said, oh, there are so many videos out there already on that. So let's not start from that. Let's start somewhere in the middle. So then I look at her life from little glimpse that I get a little bit. And even that glimpse is like an ocean. And to find the middle in the ocean is very difficult. <laughs> so I just leave it to the uh, grace what flows through to ask this question. But what prompts me first is that I have observed often that many people come to you from diverse backgrounds and uh, especially more than two decades of your work also is perceived from the performing artist space and many people come to you from that perspective as a performing artist. But as one takes step closer and closer to you, one gets to sense and see this sea and ocean of sadhana and the tradition that you are connected to. For you in your own individual journey, was there ever any kind of a difficulty in navigating these perceptions that somebody is approaching you only as a performing artist and they do not have the entire ocean of awareness about your sadhana and lineage, but you know what they are appreciating is coming from this space but they don't know that they, this space below, you know, exists in your space. So how did you navigate and what was the challenge or a difficulty in navigating this? Well, uh, uh, the thing is that when I was into the path of the bowel, uh, it was only love that I have come from and I was touched by the bowels because I was, I, my aspiration was this finding the art form that can change, that can bring transformation in a human and make a better human being, good human being. Because since childhood I have been very close with uh, the artist circle, musicians, uh, artists, poets and all of that and they were very leading people but I have also seen the humanness in them, sometimes very narrow. For me it was not enough, like they were like angels when they are musicians but they changed completely in the other time. So for me I, I said that if I take the path of art then I will uh, transform myself. I, I want to become a good human being. So that uh, I will be truthful to my art and truthful to this uh, beauty that I am presenting to people. And um, so what happened in the process is that I tried many things, but when I saw the bowels, I saw that their voice was reaching the sky. Sky doesn't mean the physical sky. I mean, it was touching the, the sky of our consciousness. I could not articulate that in that way, but I felt their voice was coming from above. Mm. And when I went to meet them as person, they were these beings with full of love and simplicity. I was deeply touched. So I wanted to adapt to that path. I wanted to go to that path where I can become such a human being like them. And um, 
so from that i started my my intention was never to become uh, an well known performer of bowl that was not my intention uh, but through music uh, i come to know the sadhana of the bowl and i through music only through the songs only i came to know that there are more and more layers which started revealing through the songs to me and uh, i was in need of guru to realize that because when i was first learning with full melody she said she cannot go beyond a certain uh, layer so i went to shanatan baba and then followed it to shashanko goshai so um, but then my guru gave me a task to sing the songs and tell the meaning of the song because mostly it started like a mission for me a seva that he asked me to do he said that baul songs are misunderstood as the music musical aspect so you go and tell the people the meaning of the song give them the right information to the people so then when um, uh, so basically i was approached to music because only that was more known in the world so people thought that i was practicing this art form which they can present outside so this is how i started performing in different places but i kept my intention to tell the meaning of the songs all the time from the very beginning that was my intention all the time that was my sankalpa all the time but i was ready there to receive whatever comes my way what came to me is performances calls from different countries to present my uh, singing to different places so i took it as a tool to convey what is inside to bring attention and in and and focus on the inner aspect of the bowl so um, was it conflicting uh, i was uh, not really in conflict i would say uh, for me it was a sadhana including going around singing was a sadhana for me i never looked at myself as an artist going around and doing even whatever people saw but i knew my truth so whatever they may have the way they approach me i talk to them like that but inside me i knew what i am doing is that clear <laughs> so you knew you knew your truth uh, i mean it seems quite early if i can take liberty of bringing your attention back to the letter that you discovered recently that you have written as a class 5 girl mm -hmm. you know so we would like to discuss the contents of that letter that you know what this was a this letter doesn't look like somebody written by a class 5 you know girl and it looks like class 50 or something else or or age 50 she wrote quite a profound reflection why she is essentially vexed up and frustrated with the education system or the process of education that she is going through so that's broadly the reflection part so i would leave the rest for her to say what exactly she has put forth i you i hardly remember it <laughs> but yeah but i don't remember it so well but uh, what i remember is that uh, <laughs> i wrote that um, for me education is to become a good human being first of all and the people who are guiding me they are guiding me to become a competitor with my friends but my friends i love my friends i want to play with them i want to share good time why should i think that person as my competitor or i have to fight my way out so i don't want to fall in this trap i don't want to take this guidance i want to fill my life with sadhana and ananda also i had written one line that i remember okay. as a young girl i said that um, that i have heard from my mother and from elders that there is god and also i have heard from the saints in the songs and in the stories that they have seen the divine in front of them so i want to find that 
and you found you found some deep meanings very early because one of the one of the most popular songs which you sang but which many don't know that it was your composition that lasted for many many years but only now people have recognized because you have you know kind of in some occasion you have reminded that it was your composition was ache shamang so that was wh- what was your age when you wrote this when you can- composed this mm, 21 so could you just reflect what inspired you to write this song and I maybe the song also you know maybe the song would also help people understand what the what the song is speaking about and then your reflection would be very beautiful if okay <laughs> I may not remember all the words. I'll sing it short. Ki jamela. Ache sha monge ra yongo heliya. राधा राधा राधार माथाय बिनोद करे झलमल 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 गो Thank you. 
was uh, at the age of what was your age when you I think 21 mm. 21 and uh, you were with your guru yeah you i met this? i met sanatan baba actually that was a bounty of things gift came in my life mm -hmm. during that time i was so grateful it was so much of grace because that came after a very big deep struggle in my life so I was so I wanted to express my my gratefulness to the divine. So for that and every time I sing this song I have darshan of Radha and Govinda. I remember the bounty, the grace, the gift they gave me. It was like uh, you travel a long distance uh, and you try to climb the stones and the rocks and hard rock and finally when you reach the peak you can see the all the landscape it is a, a song that gives me this feeling mm. Mm. thank you for sharing that with us um, one of the things that everybody who steps on the path of the bowl seems to struggle with is that the poetry itself you know when it when it is it is encrypted in the Sandhya Bhasha. You know, there are many meanings, many, many layers and layers of meanings. As a young aspirant of 17, 18 years you know, with Guru, uh, how did you correlate with this sort of a deep poetry which is having multiple meanings? At what point in time you felt uh, you got a grip on this pattern of thinking? this particular insightful way of bowels communicating their deep knowledge what was the point where you felt okay this is how it should be inculcated this is how it should be understood there are actually uh, it is uh, something that uh, completely guru kripa and uh, i knew from beginning that there are many different layers of meaning but i was not able to grasp it at all and there have been contribution of many masters for this 
uh, first of all I have to really I started having some grip of this tradition when it came in touch with Tangal. Hmm. Came in touch with Tangal? Tangal. Tangal was a must hmm. and uh, he says he is my Anubhav Guru. Hmm. <laughs> he is only my experiential master. So, he started giving me insight hmm. into the songs even though he never spoke a single word of Bengali. Hmm. He was from Kerala? He was from Kerala and he was a Chistia hmm. Parampara Fakir who was a must. Mm -hmm. and, and then later uh, after two, three years of that, I came in contact with my Guruji Shashanka Goshai mm -hmm. and he revealed, he opened the door for me. Mm -hmm. So, what would be your suggestion for those young aspirants who come or anybody who is seeking and coming? how to approach this poetry? Is it something that they have to wait it out till it enters? What is the right attitude? You know, because one is to sing songs as many times, but how, how does one, because there are some poetries which are direct, you know, where, which is very simple, but when the Sandhya Bhasha comes, when there are many, many, many layers of meaning. So, because the that, word. That was very clear, like in the previous uh, session, we had a very direct uh, word from all the masters mm -hmm. that you have to do sadhana, you have to do the deha sadhana, mm. you have to be an aspirant and a deep practitioner of the body, otherwise this meaning is not going to come. We mm. will only understand intellectually, even that intellectually we will not enter, not possible to enter to the sense, only through sadhana. And the Guru's it will reveal itself and Guru Kripa. And the Guru Kripa. Mm -hmm. So coming coming to the Guru Kripa at what because it's there are many traditions where um, I would say Guru a particular Guru is standalone extremely important, you know, and everybody goes to that Guru and that Guru becomes more or less like an institution by himself or herself and that is how things are. But what I see easily in something like Baal tradition is that many, many, it is like a stream of gurus for many hundreds of years. As a practitioner yourself, at what point in time you felt this cumulative effect of the tradition, of the tradition of gurus? You, you know that though everybody has their one guru in the deha, in the human body with whom they are interacting. Uh, but is it right to say there comes a point one realizes that this human guru is nothing but a cumulative experience of several gurus in the lineage mm. and then you are in touch with that stream through this guru. So, was there any such experience in your own journey where you felt the presence and the grace of this entire stream of gurus who hold this? Well, from the very first time mm -hmm. when I saw Baba, I saw everything. And I had no doubt, I had no, no second thought in me. I did not even need to think about, oh, I see the streams of gurus is present in this. For me, he was the divine. He was manifesting divine. He was showing me where is divine. He was, the, he was everything. There is no, no duality, there is nothing, no nothing exists except uh, there was nothing beyond him I saw. Hmm. He was, whatever he said was the ultimate truth for me. Right. So, it was, it, it was his vision, Sanatan Siddhashram? It was his vision. And uh, how did that vision given by him, what, in how many words did he tell about this vision to you? Not many. Hmm. What did he say? <laughs> he just told me create a space mm -hmm. and make people uh, make make people aware that this tradition exists. It is not only a music. Mm -hmm. It is not a folk music of entertainment. It it is a parampara that is uh, a yogic and bhakti parampara, mm -hmm. and uh, it is Shadhu Mahajan. They are holding it. And this, uh, this real message should go to the world. Mm -hmm. And for that, so far 
uh, Baul ashrams were there in the villages and it is unassuming, nobody even knows and they do not, Baul's they do not want to claim anything. So, if somebody tell them oh they are beggars they are fine, if somebody said oh they are grihastas they are fine, if they somebody said oh you know they are like bunch of harinamis they are fine, <laughs> they, they do not want to say that we are bowels, we are like that, we are like this, they do not want to prove anything. But Baba said that it is quite <coughs> essential for us to, uh, to recognize it as it is now. If we have to keep this tradition go further, because the next generation uh, people were more interested in the music, but not really in the sadhana. And Baba said if there is no sadhana, if you do not bring the attention focus to the sadhana, then this tradition cannot grow, new songs will not come. Mm. So, he gave me the task of mm. making Sanatana Siddhasham create a generation of students. Mm. So, in your now it has been in a physical plane now it has been over 5 years since the manifestation of uh, Sanatan Siddhasham. Um, how do you reflect its growth? as opposed to Baba's inspiration and your own, do you have to keep checking it time to time that oh is it is it moving in the direction what he wanted or how does how do you navigate this? Uh, mm, he has given me a clear task hmm. and uh, and I am just fulfilling it, there is no <laughs> mind, my mind will not work here, hmm. it is everything that comes from him has to happen. So, I think I, my, my question was also more to uh, reflect a little more deeper on this, if I can use the phrase style of your approach to a, an initiative like this, because people would have strategy, we, we need to grow this so many years, we need to get there, this is what needs to happen, but working with you it is you know all I can probably speak for most of us is that it is like a spontaneous. Uh, blossoming of a new flower uh, on a new day and something else comes up. So, it just looks like things are just manifesting out of nothingness, you know that okay, this is the idea, now this is what we need to move in. But when we look at it after 4 or 5 years, then we see oh okay, this is how this is moving, because uh, there is no mental construction of a goal and this you know in a way. So, I would want you to reflect you know how these inspirations come to you, you know where, where do you draw this and how do you say that I am going to put my next step here? Well, if you know all the predictabilities, <laughs> <laughs> my job is to be unpredictable ok. <laughs> and uh, the thing is uh, that I, I can see, uh, it is not that I have not tried to tell you, <laughs> I have tried to explain things many times, but it seems that you did not anyway, <laughs> but <laughs> many people I mean to everyone I speak like this is what is going to be how it is, but they just cannot see because uh, it is it's like, but I know what is going to happen. So, when it happens they say oh, ok, so like that. So, then uh, I do speak, but, <laughs> but, but people do not <laughs> right. It is like that, sorry, sorry Ram. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so, um, Very dangerous, because before that I said that anything you ask it is your risk, because I am going to tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh, it was from, from our own, from my own perspective it was like that there is always uh, a spontaneity in terms of what you are envisioning. And uh, what I mean to say is there is no burden of plan as such, there is vision definitely what is the broad direction you know what it is moving in and there is no so much of a burden of plan and anxiety and trying to do that and it looks like a little effortless that is what you no, know is an experience. Baul is effortless, hmm. Baul is Sahaj. You must experience sahaj when you are working for the tradition. You, when you are uh, doing seva in the ashram, you must feel spontaneity in mm. that. Mm. You must feel effortlessness. Mm. Then only we will understand. Okay, some work is happening. Mm. 
so that is where a sadhak's experience has to come as one's own inner attainment or inner experience has to show up in the outside manifested work also uh, for instance this sort of sense of freedom and all of that does get manifest many times say during performance of a song or an offering of a song that seems very much connected to the practice in a way but the role that you have taken up seems to have many more dimensions of building up an institution working with people mobilizing you know resources and bringing people together to towards this is a new dance of form altogether and i'm trying to get a glimpse at how does this spontaneity translate from inside of you in terms of a sadhana i'm asking as a seeker as an aspirant you know how does one bring out one's inside and apply it outside into the day to day life you know how does that process happen Hmm. Bap re. So, um, what exactly? Which? What exactly you want to know? <laughs> that you tell. So you just simply said that Bali is being effortless. So, but that effortlessness does not come just like that. It is. It is a matter of years of discipline. and sometimes that effortlessness can maximum show up during the performance you know because you have practiced and practiced and practiced but life is a bigger performance mm. of bringing people to now you have a vision and a purpose is this different from performing the no. dance it's the same same i think all these years of performing was a preparation mm. it gave me incredible amount of discipline i have learned to how to discipline my body mm. my voice mm. and discipline myself mm. because when i give a commitment to go and perform mm. i must make sure that i'm fit to perform mm. i should make sure that i i arrive at that place on the right time mm. i must make sure that all my instruments are working mm. so i have to be continuously alert mm. to every action to make to fulfill the sankalpa of giving the word mm. if i have given word because that was a teaching of my guru hmm. he said that shabda brahma that the brahman the divine lives in our words and the first practice that you must do that if you give any word to anyone you must fulfill hmm. that should be the first practice of a hmm. baul so for me it was very uh, very important this teaching and this sadhana hmm. and i try to maintain it all my life so uh so that discipline you know it, it was like um as you said correctly that first it was a dance in a smaller space you know and then i dance with life now i dance with everyone's life oh. everyone life they have given uh with trust to me oh. i'm dancing with it oh. and i'm dancing with the with the vision of my master he entrusted that in my hand so it is a it, it's a it's a dance that is uh, completely guided i i uh, the par- because my guru ji told me in my first meeting with him the person must die like uh, she was saying no that it there should be death death of this person then only the sarup can function only then the channel of the or hmm. or the or the the adhara hmm. will open and divine can come because in through all these years what i practiced through my dance and music to become an empty vessel hmm. not to apply my mind hmm. so that it can function itself hmm. whatever is supposed to come will function itself so in the life also it is the same principle hmm. to become an empty pot hmm. so that the divine can come and do the dance hmm. not me i should be absent here completely hmm. there sevadasis shokhima was asking are you shall i talk about my guru or shall i talk about this space she never asked do i talk about myself 
<laughs> so when we are doing seva of guru hmm. this is a guru seva what i am doing hmm. i am also a seva dasi but they, he has given me a different ground to dance hmm. different work hmm. to do hmm. so uh, i'm doing it but my mind should be completely in surrender with my guru not me that's beautiful and just please help me phrase this better if what i'm what happens often especially whenever we reflect on our uh, meditations on guru tatva and the, what you have said is that these things are possible to manifest only when there is death of self there is death of in a way aham or the ego despite and there is in so many cases there is no doubt that some of the masters have achieved this and one experiences this in the journey and the result is out there to see you know all all wonderful blossoming of the beat the work beat uh, the creative aspect beat any of this at the same time there is pangs of suffering and pain and all of that also continues E, and what happens as a seeker and aspirant often is this notion of death of ego becomes like an absolute goal oh i should die i should die my <laughs> ego should die and then you know one aspirant might be thinking to achieve this impossible feat like the single goal you know how should i let my ego die and the ego should not exist at all and all sorts of metrics are put to it and if i am taking if i am having pain and suffering then oh then ego is still there it's suffering but the way i look at it is with guru's relationship as though you create a new world with guru where ego can completely die with the guru and the death of the ego in in the world where you are meant to journey regularly perhaps has to go on for the karmic reasons if one can say is that right that this kind yeah. of a, this kind of a journey is possible that then people need not burden that to see the absolute death of ego even here in the you know the journey of it is that yeah yeah absolutely what you said absolutely right that if we can be in that guru tatva mm -hmm. then naturally your it will show it in your life there is no nothing called one day i will die aisa mm -hmm. kuch nahi hota hai there is nothing like that it has to happen in the moment you see your guru Hmm. you decide and you go for it so there are often the moments where guru appears here now in this life and at that moment you will you feel liberated yes absolutely so that is the connection with the guru yes right thank you for sharing that <laughs> <laughs> wonderful insight um if it's appropriate i would like to understand because there is your journey has been though well recognized well perceived from the path of the baul you have had many gurus are you in your life <laughs> i didn't go looking for them they yeah. came to me yeah they came to you <laughs> yeah yeah could you could you give little bit of glimpses of each one of Ayo. them is it possible okay i try <laughs> my first guru is my mother and uh she gave me birth but she also gave me the nam hmm. she brought my attention to the divine since my childhood uh she made me do upavasa upavasa is fasting uh, yeah fasting for shiva hmm. and to she taught me how to do abhishek so i did that like regularly i did saraswati puja hmm. every year and i was the one who took care of the altar in the house mm. and um and she carried me to ashram ramakrishna ashram mm. and she made me sit uh, and make me uh, tell me the stories of kathamrito mm. even i was a child mm. so this is how I, my whole upbringing was and many sadhus used to visit our mm. house mm. so she is my guru and she taught me how to serve how to be humble how to do pranam all that basic steps that all i have got from my mother hmm. 
was this the time you were also called buria ha 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 <laughs> Ha, I used to advise people. You used to advise what, people at know. that age. <laughs> <laughs> and and then um, after I I should say that um, there have been teachers for me in the art field who were also my guru, my music teacher, and all of them. But I'm just taking the spiritual path. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, my mother, and after I met Full Maladi. Mm. then i met sanatan baba and shashank goshai after i met tangal mm -hmm. the must and i met my guru who gave me the tantric initiation in my dream mm -hmm. and he guided me how to go mm -hmm. to him so i arrived there mm -hmm. so and later i was also initiated in the siddha parampara mm -hmm. of south um by nilakantha pillai so i think i think this is it okay. <laughs> yeah uh so it's okay if you don't hear it <laughs> <laughs> so what does it what does it mean to hold so many vidyas well i didn't hold anything <laughs> I didn't hold anything. Hmm. I just told my guru, Baba, this is all coming to me. What hmm. should I do? He says, Take it. These are all vidyas. It will all be there in you. Hmm. So because he said, I went on. Hmm. He said in Malayalam, Tangal said, Adur vidya na erato. So I took it. Hmm. Hmm. Um, but do they appear in your work? absolutely this with yes yeah hmm. absolutely it appears so each of them has specific place very specific place hmm. very specific like you could just reflect a bit apono sadhana katha na kohibe jathatatha apona apuni hoibe sabadhan do not talk about your practice hmm. everywhere be alert ha dudher bhitore ओनली <laughs> 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 one thing that my guru ji taught me that nobody should see your kitchen hmm. they must only taste your food hmm. you must not show your kitchen hmm. as a practitioner one no. one should not show and speak about their no path. my guru ji also used to say that even if you like you're dying Mm. when you were going to perform and your voice is not working you are totally down you should never even utter or apologize to the listener that mm. i am sick today sorry mm. i cannot let it be what it is mm. no apology mm. no showing of mm. what is there what happens one shows it yeah it is there it's so just what, there. what happens when one doesn't get one doesn't know and ignorantly doesn't follow this rule they will lose the shakti acha hmm. energy of the practice will go down hmm. is it because uh, the vidya should not be placed uh, in front of an unprepared situation is it because of that because people are not able to receive it respectfully is it because of yeah, that yeah everybody is not in the same level all hmm. kinds of people are there hmm. so it is better to uh, give only what is tasty hmm. because they will not be able to take people want only the lighter side hmm. they won't see the other side hmm. and if you give the sweet and bitter hmm. they will like the sweet only bitter hmm. nobody likes hmm. so give sweets only <laughs> bitter is for you i mean you like also sweet <laughs> <laughs> hmm. 
he doesn't like uh, bitter God. <laughs> so I say that <laughs> on in that term. <laughs> Before we open it up for question and answers, I had a request for this and other beautiful composition of yours, uh, where you are reflecting the song comes across as a reflection of the devotee of Krishna walking the path of thorns oh. and still you know uh, and bleeding but still looking and taking all the insults of the society and everything only as an ornament. So if you could just share that song and also your reflection on how should a practitioner understand the essence of this song. Well this was a song composed on Gopi Bhav mm -hmm. and uh, this is Kothai Bajao Vashi. Where do you play the flute, my beloved? I can hear, but I cannot see. Uh, uh, there are many thorns on the way, which pierced my soft feet and, and I, I have been bleeding. Um, and uh, I have lost my ego, my pride my identity in your love. Um, after I have lost everything or I have given up or surrendered everything to you, um, and my, my, myself and the other both are gone too. And you you made a garland of uh, flowers, you made a garland of blame or accusation or whatever you may call it uh, <laughs> of flowers and gave it as a reward to me. Mm. Uh, but Vinada says that with your, with the hope that I will find you and I will get you, I left the the worldliness, the life of the world. Uh, but I, 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 I have conviction in my heart that with the kripa of Sanatan Baba, we'll definitely find shelter at your feet. I'm very sure, like definitely find mm. shelter at your feet. <laughs> Not so humble. Huh? <laughs>
शमताओ पीते कथाए बजाओ वशी गलो सब अपन पड़ो something that reflects on how to turn one's uh, bitter experiences of life and karma in general into the sweetness of sadhana is that is that right to say that this is what the song is reflecting on yeah <laughs> the, the bitterness is good thing hmm. 
because this is a touch of the divine. Mm. <coughs> this is a great gift of the divine, so that we can realize him, his presence, and can find his grace. There is a beautiful word that adarshan, tomar adarshan pabavali adarshan hai. Because you will show you yourself to me, you become invisible. If you don't hide, how you will show? Yeah.